tonight, a report on a man injured in a Moses Lake fire and how a haunted maze in Lakeview helps the Grant County Animal Shelter. What's happening in sports, Bob? An unattached swimmer from Moses Lake performs well in Wenatchee and the Wild take over first place in the mainland division. Here's a quick glance at our weather center forecast. I'm meteorologist Mike Sines. We have a cold front on the way in and also humidity coming in off the coast. When will we see storms and who will see rain? I'll let you know in wet. I'm Amber Jenks and we have all this and much more on iFiber One News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. One person was injured after a fire started in an apartment kitchen on Saturday night in Moses Lake. Moses Lake firefighters responded to an apartment complex on South Alder Street after a fire started on the stove. According to Assistant Fire Chief Pete Kanjara, the resident reportedly tried to put the fire out but started another fire in the living room and in a garbage can in the bathroom. The fire caused smoke damage to the bathroom. The resident has minor injuries and was taken to Samaritan Hospital. The cause of the fire is undetermined due to conflicting statements from witnesses. The Moses Lake Police are investigating the fire. People who want to get a closer look at their children's Halloween candy this year can stop by Columbia Basin Hospital's radiology department Friday and Saturday night. Reporter Joe Utter has the details. Before all the little trick-or-treaters start digging through their Halloween candy this weekend, the radiology department at Columbia Basin Hospital is offering a free way to make sure that candy is safe. Parents can bring their children's Halloween candy to have it x-rayed on Friday and Saturday. Radiology staff will x-ray the candy and allow parents and children to take a look at the photo to ensure the candy is safe. This is the first year the Afreda Hospital is offering the service, and radiologic technologist Johnny Murray explains what will happen. What we're going to do is Friday and Saturday night from 6 to 8, we're going to be x-raying candy bags so you can bring your candy into the hospital, follow the science back to radiology. We'll x-ray it out for you, make sure it's all safe for you, so you have a great, healthy, safe Halloween. Murray, who helped out in past years with similar events at Samaritan Hospital in Moses Lake, said he's never found unsafe things like razor blades or needles in Halloween candy, but the x-ray ensures the candy is safe to eat. We very rarely find anything. In fact, I've never found anything, but it's just a nice community service to do this so you can absolutely relax and know that your kids are safe. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. A Moses Lake man allegedly forced a woman into a car after demanding money on Saturday night. Anthony Montez, a 23-year-old man, reportedly went to a woman's home on East Pirate Lane in Moses Lake and demanded money, the woman's keys, and cell phone. According to Moses Lake Police, on Monday, the woman refused to give Montez the items and he allegedly grabbed her by the hair and threw her to the ground. He reportedly dragged her to the car. The victim told police she feared for her safety and she got in. Police found the victim's car after it ran out of gas and later arrested Montez for kidnapping, robbery, taking a motor vehicle without permission, and theft. The suspect and victim were previously in a relationship. Farmers can discuss the issues they are facing with a congressman. Representative Dan Newhouse is hosting an agricultural forum on November 6 between 10.30 a.m. and noon at the Moses Lake Civic Center Auditorium. Representatives from the U.S. Department of Agricultural Farm Service Agency, the Washington State Department of Agriculture, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, and the State Farm Bureau are attending. The representatives are going to give presentations and answer questions from the public. Newhouse stated he is committed to policies promoting the state's agriculture and he is looking forward to hearing from farmers and others involved in the industry. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after this. 
My name is Kat Sanderson, Managing Broker for Pillar Rock Realty Group. We love the Columbia Basin because it's our home and we want to give back to our community by kicking off our Pay It Forward campaign. If you buy or list with us, we will donate 1% of our total proceeds to a local charity of your choice and in your name. Call us today at 754-4444 or visit PillarRockRealty.com because we are your local real estate experts. This weather segment is brought to you by Barry Motors, one great place to buy and service a car. I'm meteorologist Mike Sines with a look at your weather headlines. We're going to have a cold front that will move through, increasing the chance for storms, and we are going to see a change in temperatures. Taking a look at our almanac forest here in Efredo, we reached a low of 45 degrees. The record low was set back in 2011 of 19 degrees, nothing in the way of precip. And the sun set for us nicely at 549. Friends out in Moses Lake saw the sun set at 549 as well, low 46, record low back in two, it back in 1970 of 26 degrees, nothing in the way of precip. Right now outside your door, it is 58. We are seeing partly cloudy skies and the winds are blowing from the east northeast at about five miles per hour. Future gas model showing this cold front to finally right here. It's gonna continue to come in off of the coast. We're going to have humidity also in play as this continues to make its way in. We're going to see chances for showers and thunderstorms to erupt. Have your umbrella ready, folks. Here's a look as we make our way into Wednesday afternoon. The majority of those showers and storms, but then a second band is already going to be making its way in towards our region. Wednesday out towards the coastal regions at 1 o'clock. You can already expect showers and storms to be developing. Seattle 56, Port Angeles 55, Yakima 60. Taking it closer in towards our region. Scattered showers and storms are going to be possible all throughout the day, especially during the afternoon time. Bridgeport 54, Quincy 54, 57 out towards Moses Lake, and for us here in Ephrata, 56 degrees. We're going to see periods of rain showers, and we're also going to see areas that will see partly cloudy skies. The way it's going to work is we're going to have rain chances that will continue. We're going to have bands of rain that will start to form and then make their way out towards the east. That's going to be the general trend for these storms. Have your umbrella handy, folks, because we are going to see these showers and storms develop at any time, and we are going to have breaks in the rain. However, it will continue to rain throughout tomorrow into tomorrow night. Taking a look at your extended outlook, you can definitely see tomorrow we're going to have a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms Thursday and Friday as well. And then as we make our way into Saturday, we're going to see another system come in here with a low pressure, bringing in ample humidity, and that's why we're going to see a 60% chance to see showers and storms on Saturday. Heavy rainfall is to be expected. Temperatures are going to drop, as you can see, for tomorrow. 56 degrees for the high because we are going to have a cold front make its way towards our region and then temperatures are also going to drop. Lows expected to be right around the 40s, highs in the 50s to 60s. Thanks for watching. Sports is next. Paying your grant PUD bill with ePay is like getting free cuts in line. You pay when you want, how you want. Get free cuts in line with grant PUD ePay. Visit grantpud.org. Oh, dude, I'm the seventh theater. It's totally cool. Ah. The new flamethrower cheeseburger now with a five buck lunch. I'm going flamethrower today. Remember what happened last time? I'm going flamethrower today. Gary, do you remember what happened last time? I'm going flamethrower today. Remember what happened last time? <laughs> Comes with a Sunday now. I can handle it. You know your body, Gary. Go flamethrower. Now the DQ five buck lunch comes with the new jalapeno bacon flamethrower cheeseburger, plus fries drink and a Sunday. This is fan food, not fast food. Big Ben dropped a three-set match on the road at Spokane. 
Sasquatch dominated the first set, 25-12. The Lady Vikings bounced back with a hard-fought second set, but lost by two points, 26-24. The team dropped a third set, 25-19, and falls to 2-9 in East Region play and 9-20 overall. Bryn Bowers was the lone bright spot for Big Ben with 11 kills. The Lady Vikings are back on the court tomorrow at Columbia Basin College in Pasco. USA unattached swimmer Eric Kemper placed in the top six in 10 events and set six best times at the very scary open swim meet in Wenatchee. His efforts qualified Kemper for the age group regionals to be held in February at the King County Aquatic Center. Kemper touched first in the 100 free with a personal best 56.8 seconds. He placed second in the 100 and 200 butterfly and 200 freestyle, setting personal best in all three events. Kemper rounded out his performance with third place finishes in the 100 and 200 backstroke and 400 individual medley. He took fourth in the 200 IM, fifth in the 100 breaststroke, and had a sixth place finish in the 200 breaststroke. The Wenatchee Wild took over sole possession of first place in the mainland division with an 8-0 dismantling of, Sur of the Surrey Eagles. First period goals by Joe Draben, Brendan Harrison, and Josh Bell gave Wenatchee an early 3-0 lead. Baker and Draben added a score in the second period, and a third goal from Alex Bates pushed the margin to 6-0. The Wild completed the shutout on power play goals from Dakota Rabby and Draben, who finished with the hat trick. Wenatchee outshot Surrey 51-19 on the night. Garrett Nito made 19 saves for the Wild and turned in his first career BCHL shutout. Wenatchee was 3-for-6 on the power play and 4-of-4 four four with a shorthanded goal on a penalty kill. Well, another Cougar has received honors from the Pac-12 office. This time, it's quarterback Luke Falk winning the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week for his performance at Arizona. It's the second time this season Falk has won the award. The QB completed 47 of 62 passes for a season high 514 yards and five touchdowns in the 45-42 victory over the Wildcats. Falk currently leads the nation in completion percentage and pass completions. The gunslinger is fourth nationally in touchdown passes with 26. The Cougs are looking for their fourth conference win in a row when they host eighth-ranked Stanford Saturday evening at Martin Stadium. We'll be back after this short break. You don't have to drive to Seattle for exceptional cancer care. Confluence Health's cancer program delivers world-class care close to home. We have a highly experienced oncology team in a state-of-the-art facility, and we're a member of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, which gives our patients access to world-renowned therapies developed at Fred Hutchinson, the University of Washington Medicine, and Seattle Children's. Together with the SCCA, we're delivering world-class cancer care close to home. The Dodge Brothers' competitive spirit and engineering prowess started long before they built their first car and will continue long after their latest, the most technologically advanced vehicle in its class. Our spotlight story tonight is about a Lakeview family and their haunted maze that benefits the Grant County Animal Shelter. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. That's enough to send shivers up your spine. You're going to make it a fun Halloween night for the Jones family of Lakeview near Soap Lake. It's a freaky family tradition and a benefit for Grant County Animal Outreach in Moses Lake. Tristan Jones, along with his wife Sheila, their daughters Chloe Jones and Rain Horvath, will run the Halloween maze with other relatives and friends. About 20 volunteers make it possible, and it's taken several weeks to put together. Tristan explained why he constructs the maze every year. Well, I love Halloween. It's always been one of my favorite holidays. 
I love getting the kids involved. And I remember when I was a kid, going to people's houses that were all decorated up and seeing all the different stuff they did. It, it always amazed me. The Jones family and friends are putting on what they call the biggest, most horrific Halloween maze they've ever built. Made of donated pallets, the maze fills the Joneses' front yard. The family invites you to join them and other relatives and friends who volunteer to make it amazingly ghostly and ghoulish. They'll even throw in a freaky dose of demented clowns and zombies of all ages. Have you ever met a zombie baby? <laughs> Tristan Jones, who grew up in Soap Lake and works at a data center in Quincy, is the lead special effects coordinator, but says it's a collaborative effort with family and friends. It started about eight years ago when we lived in Ephrata. We just done up our house and we just progressively gotten bigger. And this last, this year, uh, people started asking us what we were going to charge to go through it. And that's when we reached out to our friend at the Animal Outreach. Cost is a can of dog or cat food or a cash donation to benefit the Grant County Animal Outreach Shelter in North Moses Lake. What does Tristan's wife, Sheila, think about his preoccupation with Halloween? He's lucky he married me because I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> Tristan described what's inside the maze marked with zombie warning signs. There's a little bit of everything in there. We got one, two, three, about four or five different rooms. They each have their own little theme. Their daughters also love their roles in the maze. It's something unique that you don't see often. And when you go out and about, just when you're trick-or-treating, like as a kid, I didn't see all these cool mazes. I saw, you know, the typical decorations, and this is fun. I have a great time scaring people and, <laughs> you know, even putting things up. Tristan explained how the maze is child-friendly. So we have a code that we give, code word that we give our uh, volunteers to help scare people to tone it down a little bit for the little kids. From State Route 28, exit at Grant Street Northwest, then right to Grant Place Northwest, then left to Lakeview Place Northwest. You can Google map their location with the address 19426 Lakeview Place Northwest. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. We'll be right back after this. Quincy Foods LLC, a subsidiary of Norpac Foods, is seeking motivated individuals to fill the positions of general laborer for their corn harvest season. They have full-time seasonal openings, must be 18 years old and older, willing to work swing shift, great people to work for in a challenging food processing environment. Apply at 222 Columbia Way in Quincy between 8 and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday or online through WorkSource. Quincy Foods is an equal opportunity employer. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. The patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Welcome back. A man was sentenced to community service after fighting with a Moses Lake police officer who caught him driving drunk. Vladimir Irapinstev, a 26-year-old Moses Lake man, pleaded guilty in Grant County Superior Court to assault in the third degree and DUI. He has no previously felony convictions and was sentenced under a first-time offender sentencing alternative. Irapinstev was sentenced to 30 days in jail with 28 days converted into 224 hours of community service. Moses Lake police stop Irap instead while driving. He refused to do what police told him to do and refused to a breath test. When a search warrant was obtained for blood to be drawn, he fought with an officer. Move over and slow down when you see emergency vehicles or you face paying a ticket. 
The Moses Lake State Patrol is conducting move over emphasis patrols through Thursday to educate drivers. In 2014, the State Patrol pulled over more than 4,000 drivers for violating the law. The law states drivers are required to move over and slow down when they see emergency vehicles, such as police, fire, medical tow trucks, and vehicles providing roadside assistance using hazard lights. A total of 212 State Patrol vehicles were struck during traffic stops or while helping drivers between 2007 and 2014. Three troopers and several people were injured. Grant County senior citizens have a chance to get their cars serviced for free. Big Bend Community College is teaming up with the Moses Lake High School and Skills USA for their annual Senior Citizen Day on November 7th. The event is from 9 a.m. to, 10 to 1 p.m. in the college's 3300 building. Students and apprentices who are learning automotive mechanics and maintenance are conducting oil changes, fluid inspections, and tire changes or rotations. Moses Lake High School Auto Tech teacher John Heflin says students have been putting on the event to give back to the community's elderly population while improving their skills. Senior Citizen Day is open to residents age 55 or above. Appointments are required to ensure everyone can have their car serviced. For more information or schedule an appointment, contact Heflin at 509-793-2259. In Northwest News, it started as a project to help a husband pass the time as he cared for a sick wife. Now, a retired medical device engineer's power cane is helping his disabled daughter to walk again. For CNN, Amy Frazier has a story. It's a kitchen table turned design center. A place retired engineer Greg Tibby could care for his wife Roxana as she underwent cancer treatment last winter. And I just kind of designed and watched the wife and then fixed lunch and designed some more and watched mm -hmm. the wife and maybe called 911 a couple times. For Greg, working on this project was a kind of therapy. She was walking with this and it's, it's very, very slow. A project inspired by his daughter wow, Celeste. Five years ago, Celeste had a stroke. So my whole left side has been paralyzed. She uses a cane to walk long distances at Clark College where she's a student. There's people of my age, but it's mostly you know, the young uh, folks, and so I have to keep up at their pace. Twice she has fallen on campus, but then a visit to her mom at the hospital got her dad thinking. The hospital hallway had a handrail. Celeste handed off her cane. She grabbed that rail and took off. I thought, wow. And all of a sudden the light went off and said, she needs a moving handrail portable handrail that moves. Greg has designed and built three versions so far, powered by a cordless drill. Well, I'm so grateful. Celeste tested it out on a hill on campus. And it gave me a little momentum and a little strength to get up that hill. If it can help his daughter, Greg now wonders if the Celeste power cane could help others. Next month, he plans to show the power cane to his daughter's brain injury and stroke group to see what they think. He wants to stay in the background, but hopes perhaps a nonprofit will pick up the idea and run, finding a way to offer the cane at little or no cost. Everyone's asked me, do, do you have a patent? And I says, no, I, I didn't do this for money. I did this for her. His daughter is healthy and his wife is now cancer free. Greg says that's all the payment he needs. That's going to do it here for us at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching and we'll see you again tomorrow.